apologies straight off the bat for having a slightly red face and a shiny head. It was very hot in Brighton, which is where I went to see this movie, and I spent the rest of the day outside, so it's made me a little bit oily. Also, I know it's a little bit dark, but that's because it's like 9.30 in the evening, and I wanted to do this while my thoughts on the movie were still fresh. So let's get into that. Across the Spider-Verse, the sequel to the much acclaimed and beloved Into the Spider-Verse. Now this is probably going to get me some hate, but if I'm being perfectly honest, I think the original Into the Spider-Verse is a little bit overrated. And this one isn't a joke, I genuinely think that it's really hyped up more than it is. Don't get me wrong, it is a really good movie, but I get a feeling a lot of people get drawn into the visuals, which are amazing. I will not take that away from it. It is an amazingly beautiful movie, one of the most unique animated movies I've ever seen. But I don't think the writing's as good as it could be, and I know these guys can do really well because this is Lord and Miller, who did the Lego movie, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 1 and 2, and Clone High, which are all really funny movies. But I just feel that both the story and the jokes of the first movie aren't as good as they could be. They are still good, but they feel a little bit standard for the superhero movies we got at that time. Conversely, however, this movie is amazing. This is more what I thought the first movie should have been like. This definitely feels like they're taking all the elements of the first movie and using them to their full potential, and I really appreciate it for that. In terms of the plot, it's a bit difficult to explain because it's so insane. One of the big things about the Spider-Verse movies is that they have so much information thrown at you at once that it's a little difficult to follow sometimes but I'll do my best to sum it up. Basically, a villain called The Spot, which it was really clever to make him the villain because he's normally a D-lister Spider-Man villain, but this time they really utilize him well, is aching to get revenge on Miles Morales because he inadvertently created him and it's ruined his life. In order to do this, he's going from reality to reality to increase his powers and eventually destroy Miles. And in order to defeat him, he teams up with a bunch of other multiversal Spider-Men who are led by Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099. That's probably the most I can get into without getting into major spoilers or without having to go on about this movie's plot for another hour because it is really insane, but in a really good way. And that in many ways does really sum up why I like this movie over the first one. Like I said, the plot of the first one did feel kind of standard for a Spider-Man movie or even just a superhero movie in general. This one is completely unique. I really can't think of another movie that has a plot like this and it is incredibly well handled. And they really utilize the craziness of having multiple different versions of Spider-Man across the entire multiverse and all the possibilities that can exist with this concept and it is hilarious and unbelievably imaginative. And it all ties really well with the visual style, which is a massive upgrade from the first movie. The first movie looked incredible, but this one looks unbelievable. And a really clever thing that they do is that almost every different reality has its own distinct art and visual style, and it's done amazingly well. And it's also clever because the individual characters maintain their art style even out of their home universes. They kind of tease this idea in the first movie, but they're really doing it really well in this one, and it looks great. And seeing all these different styles interact with each other, it's really interesting, and they really pull it off well. Miles is still a really good protagonist, as always, and I like how they get more into Gwen this time. We definitely see her go through more emotions than we saw her get through in the previous movie, and we get more into her backstory and the kind of problems that she's going through, and she basically becomes the secondary protagonist, such as how Peter Parker was the secondary protagonist in the last movie. All the characters meld together very well, and despite how fast-paced this movie is, at least for somebody like me, it is actually quite easy to follow, but I can certainly understand why some people would find difficulties with having to follow this ridiculously intense story and visual style, but for me, I found it fine. I also like how I went to see this in Brighton, because the art style, for the most part, really reminded me of the kind of stuff you would see in the graffiti or the art shops within that city. Brighton's always been a very big supporter of outsider art, and this really does have that kind of look about it, and it just matched really well. This is more circumstantial, granted, but it was a nice experience. Also, there were a couple of little nods to the Insomniac Spider-Man games, and they were actually quite cute. One was how the Insomniac Spider-Man had a very quick cameo, which was a very blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment, but you could notice it, and it was nice to see. 
and the other one being that Genki, Miles' roommate and friend, is actually playing the new Insomniac Spider-Man game which is coming out in October. And it's a bit difficult to tell because the screen is at an angle, so you can't exactly tell what's going on. But you can tell that it's new gameplay footage that we haven't seen yet, and that was a nice touch. Overall, this is a movie where, with the first one, I was very frustrated about how there was evidently something about it that I couldn't see that everybody else could, because I know I'm in a minority when I think that the first movie is a bit overrated. This one, I'm glad that I'm basically along with the rest of the crowd because it was an amazing movie and I'm really happy that I saw it. And it's impressive that it put me in such a good mood because being in Brighton in a really hot day where you see a bunch of guys walking around without their shirts on, it's a good way to get me into a bad mood. But this movie really helped perk me up, so I'm really happy about that. But let's see what I swing into next time.